everybody. Well, actually, you're welcoming me because you are you were already here. Um, does everybody know my name? No. Yes, no, maybe. It's Baldini. <laughs> does anybody know why they call me Baldini? It's what I do at kids' shows. It's like because you're bald. Does anybody know why they call me Baldini? Because you're Because I'm bald. That's part of it. The other part is a guy by the name of Harry Houdini. The greatest magicians of all time. Now, how many people believe in magic? It's okay, you don't have to put your hand up. See, magic, a lot of people don't know what that means. To me, anyway, it's a feeling you get. See, a lot of people think making things appear and disappear is the magic, and it's not. That's called an illusion, which is where science comes in. You're looking at it, you hear it, you think it's happening, and it's not. And as a matter of fact, Harry Houdini had a quote, what the eyes see and what the ears hear, the mind believes. And this, of course, constitutes an illusion. Magic is when the hand opens and the ball's not there. But the magician made you think it went there. We'll get into that, and we're actually going to teach you how to do that as well. Um, but first, I'm going to do, and I'm going to do an effect that, that clearly defines the difference between magic and illusion. But before that, I'm going to address the question I get asked most frequently, which is Baldini. If you are so magical, can you make me money? Which is a fair question. But as the saying goes, it takes money to make money. Now I want to know, is there anyone in this room, I know we're all starving students, that has a $20 bill that they would like to lend to me briefly for a scientific experiment that earns a fold? Do you know how to make it turn a <laughs> Anybody? See, now if I take it from Joe, you'll say it's set up. You will get it back. I see someone up there out. Perfect. All right, well, we've got something even closer, so. They're starting students. They might not have to. Excellent. What's your name, bro? Joel. 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 Let's get a round of applause for Joel. <laughs> we'll polish it off, give him just 20 bucks. That's how this one works. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Paris paper. Now, you know. now, it's going to go to the counterfeit. Here we go. It stays in full view. My sleeves are rolled up. Nothing here, nothing here. Okay. Will not leave your sight, not for a moment. I fold, I unfold. Look at that. Fifty dollars. Oh you can applaud, absolutely. <laughs> and I you that fifty dollars. <laughs> here you go, man. It's all over here. Sure. Honestly, here. The magic has limitations. <laughs> now it sure looked like it went in my hand there, didn't it? Now, you're probably wondering where Joel's $5 bill went. 20. Just want to make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> right here in my pocket. You can hold the applause on that. Now, let's get back to what illusion and magic is. An illusion, what Houdini said, what the eyes see. Does it look like I'm ripping Joel's 20? What are your eyes telling me? Right? I'm not. My brain is being fooled right now. It just looks like it. Pretty startling illusion. <laughs> Listen carefully. Shh. Your ears tell you that that bill is being ripped. Mm -hmm. False messages being sent to the brain. You guys would know the terminology yeah, better. Right? That's exactly <laughs> that. One, two, three, four. Apparently torn pieces. If I fold them down, and I fold it down, when I open them, you will see the bill was never ripped. The bill was never torn. Those. Religions. That's a cue for a clap. <laughs> and by the way, that feeling you had when I opened the bill up and it wasn't ripped anymore, it's called magic. Now, and I better see every hand go up. Who believes in magic now? Did you all feel good at the end of that trip? Yeah. And then there's just some magic haters in the room. More than two ladies. <laughs> what we're going to do today, I've got two associates with me, uh, Alex Kazam. Oh, there he is, I'm Mike Falter. And Jason Palter. Both of them also are magicians. Alex actually guest lectured with me last time, and you'll be happy to know he, he's really well read on the pen and teller, and he's going to talk the language today. He's going to think he was in your class. And then Jason Palter also is another good friend and associate. Um, and you know, I keep talking about the ball disappearing. We're going to teach you. <clears throat> well, first, he's going to talk a little bit about why the brain finishes, you know pictures and sentences for you by seeing something that's not happening. Then he's going to show you technically how to perform it, and then you guys will all be able to perform uh, magic on your friends and then understand the science behind it. 
Now, the first trick I'm going to do for you, and I will teach it to you, so I'm going to do a couple tricks, then we'll get uh, Jason up here, and then, uh, and then we'll get Mr. Kazam to finish. <coughs> Simple elastic band. I will perform the effect first, and then I'll explain the science behind why it works. And then even though you will know how it is done, it will still appear to fool your brain, which is, again, reinforcing how strong neuroscience is in performance magic. Watch carefully. This is not something you want to try at home. You try it at grandma's, not at home. <laughs> So well. well, actually, you yeah. can see it's down there on my wrist. I never went up like that. Now, how many people did that look like it went up my nose? Don't be lazy. Did it look like it went up my nose or not? One more time. Watch carefully. Okay? Now, this is how it is done, not why, why it works, but how it is done. I put my palm up, I pinch, I pull up, I come back and I pinch here. And what I like to do is just use this finger to press into a single strand. They say in magic, a big action covers a little action. The big action is my face. The little action is the trick. Full speed. And it still looks like it's going on my nose. Now here's the thing about this effect. If you don't make a face, Nothing. <laughs> make a little face. Nothing. But if I make a big face, in spite of the fact that you know for fact that this is going down and not up, your brain says, uh-uh, I saw that go up. Right? A little round of applause for one magic piece. Now, Kazam, will you help me hand out some of these, buddy? You do not have to do this if you don't want to, but if you like to make people smile, you might want to take a gander at trying to learn this effect. <laughs> Elastics for everybody. By the way, stretch it out just a little bit before, because they're right out of the bag, so you want it to be not so taut. Okay. Palm goes up, you pinch. When I teach little kids at the Science Center, like four or five years old, they like to hook it, and it's just harder to release. We're all big enough that we can pinch it, pull it up about you know as far as it goes without it breaking. This hand comes back and pinches here. Now you can do it from here, but like I said, I like to just turn my Left wrist, a uh, quarter turn counterclockwise, so I can reach that finger over. Now, a lot of people do this, and they bring it to their nose, they shorten the elastic. You want to keep this as long as you can, almost like in your solar plex here. It certainly helps if you kind of do the, am I really about to do this thing? You know, the more theatrical, and then you have to big face and let go at the same time. One, two, three. <laughs> He made no face at all. <laughs> he was like this. He's like... <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. You're all going to be Alright, you'll be happy to know the next one. It's nowhere near as gross. So you probably all want to learn it. It can be done almost anywhere. I hope you guys can see this. I'm thinking now maybe I should just leave it white because I did it with colored it with a red sharpie thinking you wouldn't be able to see it. but. Can you guys see the red sharpie there? A red sharpie, the red straw. Can you see this? Can everyone see this from your seat? The straw, if not, you can stand up or, or just shift to a line where you can see it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you've all heard of telekinesis. You are scientists, people, right? Telekinesis, yes? 
theory, anyway. I don't think anyone's ever really proved it to be true, but it is the ability to move things with your mind and your mind alone, which is exactly what I'm going to attempt to do with this straw. Now, some of you may know how this is done. Some of you may see how it's done. Some of you may just kind of figure it out. The only request I have, particularly in a teaching situation, is to not yell out, I saw it, I know it, he did this, he did that, because I'm going to teach everyone about 15 seconds later anyway, and the only thing you do when you yell out like that is destroy the magic for someone who for 15 seconds thought I moved it with my mind. <laughs> All right? Really takes a lot of focus. It's a little bit of kinetic energy from the hands, too. It's about as deep as my science terminology runs. Here we go. You guys can maybe focus your energy, help me as well. This might help it move. A little bit. Now, if you don't know, this is how it moved. <laughs> That's not how it's done. Because if I went like this, hey, you want to see the strong move without me touching it? You would know right away that I blew on it. So here's where the science comes in. There's a couple elements of science. Number one, the second I say, do you guys know what telekinesis is? The illusion has begun. Because in your brain, whether you realize it or not, you're going, oh my god, is this guy going to really move this thing with his brain, his mind, and his mind only? So it's already started. You're anticipating it. Now, I do this. And I'm doing a lot of stuff down here because I want you to look here. It's called misdirection. I'm not being, look here. I'm like, help me focus your energy. And whether you realize that or not, I'm forcing you to look here, part two, which keeps your face, uh, your eyes away from my face. Part three, it's called time delay misdirection, which is the longer I wait to do it, the more likely you are to not lift your eyes from here because you've invested, I don't know, 20, 25 seconds of your entire life waiting to see this miracle, you're not going to lift your eyes and miss it. That's how it works. So if I bring all that together, I even went like this once and did my hand and didn't blow on purpose, and then I said maybe I need help focus your energy. I didn't say look at the straw. I said focus your energy, and nothing's going to be looking up here unless you're a real troublemaker, right? <laughs> Which was me, by the way. <laughs> it's even mistake. Part, the last part of science is this. I don't have to be down here to blow it. I blow it from here at a 45 degree angle. And the same thing is accomplished. So I'm going to have some straws, and then I'm going to have Alex, uh, Jason Paul to come up. Um, I'll give a little introduction, and, uh, and you just take it and pass it back. So yeah, you put it down in front of you. I mean, you know, you can just first try the whole move. Also, when you blow, don't go. You want to be as quiet as possible. Maybe just take some passing down. Just take some pass down. Sorry. See, I'm up here in the top row as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, so you know, I'll give that a shot. You don't have to go through the whole routine. Just try it once in front of you, see if you can blow on it at 45 degrees out in front of you. And then, you know, typically in my seminars, I would break right now. We would all like try it on each other. But... And this also, you know, uh, I'm a smoker. I'm not proud of it. But if you are a smoker, uh, you can obviously do this with a cigarette as well, or a long straw in any restaurant or anything like that at all. So it's called an impromptu trick. So is the other one, the elastic, right? The money morph trick in the beginning and the torn and restored, that was just magic. <laughs> All right. One more time, round of applause for yourself. It's magic six now, we're going to continue on. Uh, my, my first uh, associate. <laughs> hey, you want to start the car? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to build to a grinding halt. I'm going to uh, do this. This is the, uh, the bag that David was talking about. Totally. Uh,